Okay. So, hello and welcome to Mythophiles, where we are fans of all kinds of stories. I am Duncan Gale. I am Cody Decker. And today we are talking about Unsold by Will White. And White. Yeah, and I understand why you want to say right because it's it's spelled it's spelled like it's right, but there's just not the not the R in there. But yeah, it's Will White. That's a it would be a great name for an author. Because what do you do? I well I will write. <laughs> I will write, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well. Uh, yeah, All this, right. This was my so, pick. Uh, yeah. So this is so this is Cody's pick. So yeah, Cody, why don't you go ahead and let us know, yeah, what's your thinking behind this? Why did you pick this? So on. Okay. So every I always try to look for like more modern things that are trending for like like hot new fantasies because there's classic fantasies and there's like, well, what's popular now? This is right. this came up as one of the popular ones for having. Uh, what I saw, they said it would have a good magic system, which I always like, and mm-hmm. a, and a solid protagonist. Um, right. And so that was pretty much it. I just added it to my wish list, and then this was the time that I decided to actually try it out. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we have covered a couple of books somewhat like this uh on the show and these are definitely books that i have less of a sort of background and familiarity with uh overall but uh yeah i mean i i definitely found this uh found this interesting and um yeah so i guess uh we want to just get into the uh to the background a little bit or you you have any other prefatory remarks here or I can give a, I didn't, I wasn't into it that much, but I was really into how it was done. Um, Because sometimes I I go through books and I'm more just interested in like how it's doing what it does. Um, So yeah, I I was, I I, I did enjoy it, but like more Mm -hmm. from like a, hmm, so this, like, because I know that this is like well-respected in writer communities too. So I'm like, so other Mm -hmm. writers like this, so what is this guy doing? And so that was more that the angle I halfway it takes like a wild turn with a character that I was like, I did not expect any of that to happen. But there's a certain yeah. character that comes in that I had yeah. I paused and had to like check that I was like on the same story. Right. Yeah, yeah. There really is yeah, a pretty yeah, dramatic, yeah, as you as you mentioned, sort of change. Yeah, that is it really almost exactly the halfway mark of the story where yeah really the first half of this book is one thing and then it and then it turns into a slightly different thing yeah 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 no that's it okay for me. okay cool cool yeah so so yeah again yeah we are talking about unsold by will white and yeah will white uh yeah there's not um not too much information about him online. I mean, I'm just looking at his Wikipedia page here. I mean, he's a he's a, a young guy. Um, I mean, he hasn't been writing that long, but in his relatively brief career so far, he has already um, written an impressive number of things. He's quite a prolific guy. Um, and it looks like, yeah, so we're talking about Unsold, which is the first part of a series that he's done uh, that is called Cradle. Um, and he has a couple of other series, uh, Traveler's Gate and Elder Empire. Um, and um, yeah, and I, I mentioned those only because, yeah, there are certain things in this book that are a little, they sort of struck me a little bit odd from a storytelling perspective, but apparently a lot of the things in this book, they sort of, connect to other series he did and there's there's sort of like a like an overall connection among his different series Mm. and if you know that it makes a little more sense with the way uh certain things are going on here it's almost like yeah i mean he he has his own sort of like you know marvel universe type thing where there's all these seemingly unconnected stories but they have like a sort of 
overall kind of connection with with other stuff going on here, which is which is interesting. Um, it makes it maybe a little bit daunting, maybe uh, if you're just coming in uh, to one particular uh, series, you're kind of like, okay, what's going on here? But I can see how if you sort of get into it a little bit more with with other series and stuff, you can you can start to appreciate that. So. Yeah, uh, having books doing the the Marvel type thing, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Marvel didn't invent that, but that is like how like yeah. people, yeah. But like just just because that is like a, a thing I've seen like more modern writers like say you should do, because mm -hmm. if you sell one book, publishers right. will ask if you have something in a similar vein of that, and you can be like, mm -hmm. oh, this takes mm -hmm. place. It's not the same story. It takes place in the same setting though, and then it, it's really easy for like publishers to like get on board with it. So I'm saying oh, that yeah. like. Well, writers are saying like you should do that more for um mm -hmm. brandon sanderson's the big famous one because he has a whole multiverse right. and that is very intimidating because it's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. oh there's one character who's not even mentioned in what who, their name isn't said in one book but if you pay attention that's actually a character from a separate universe and you right. can tell if you like if you just notice how the names are pronounced um if you get really into oh. it yeah so those are real those are really Easter eggs for the, for the hardcore fans. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it's interesting how, you know, it's very much dependent upon like, okay, well, if you've gotten really into this and you're really invested in it, then it's really exciting. But <laughs> if you haven't, then you really sort of roll your eyes and like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> but I, I mean, it's a, it's a real sort of difference in just, yeah, whether you've gotten into it or not, that's that has a huge impact upon how you experience these kinds of things. Yeah. That's also what they say is the the risk if you do stuff like that, especially if right. like if you write like I'm going to write four books, so you book one, book two, book three. And then uh, if the publishers don't like the first one, uh, right, right. they're not going to ask you for the second one. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it, it is like a, a higher risk, higher reward thing. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, hey. For people like me, when I watch Avengers Endgame, you know, I'm like, I'm like in tears, like almost the entire time. Whereas for many other people, I mean, probably the vast majority of the population, uh, it probably comes off as impenetrable nonsense. But, you know, <laughs> that's the that's the risk you, you take. You know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah that's you like you look at look at all those characters because superpowers are just magic there's no yeah. it you know, it's just a magic system and then it's like okay yeah but he he can turn in small ant sized and talk to ants and you're like why well the guy right. wanted to right <laughs> well yeah i mean he met this other guy who actually created <laughs> the technology and um yeah, and he knows his daughter and everything. Yeah, I mean, I mean, obviously, you know, yeah. Uh, just get yeah. into the backstory. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that person that they just mentioned, their name is a reference to a character in, a, in one of the comic books. You're like, oh, do I do anything with that information? You're like, no, yeah. it won't impact the story or you at all. But just so you know, that license plate is the same number as one of the comic books. Right, right. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they actually mentioned this, like, corporation that's 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 really important <laughs> and stuff. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are we going to see that corporation? No, no, but no, just no, but there will just be vague references to them. Uh, yeah. Throughout. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe in 10 okay. years, you'll see something, but yeah, so that's, that's, so we get that in movies, but yeah, unsold uh, mm -hmm. a quick synopsis. If I had okay. to do one, yeah, it'd be a magic tournament for civil rights. Um, uh -huh. And, and then someone comes into the picture later that escalates the plot to a bigger aspect than that. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, to get a little more detailed into the plot. Yeah. So basically, yeah, the story begins. So yeah, the, uh, the main character here is a character named, Way she Linden, okay, and uh, and so I guess Linden is like his his name, and then she is the is the family that he belongs to, and then Way is sort of like the larger clan that he belongs to. Uh, so that's that's how that name works, um, and so yeah, basically, what we see at the beginning here 
yeah, as you mentioned, is a um, sort of a ceremony that people in this society go through where every child puts their hand into, so it's not, it's not water, but it's something like water, right? And basically the way that the water reacts to the, to this particular child, that tells them what magical abilities this child has and basically how they will be trained uh, from that point forward. And um, in terms of the four different possibilities, um, I will start to list them. And if I if I get stuck, I'm sure Cody, you can you can help me out here. So what? It's, Absolutely. Um, yeah. So uh, the four different possibilities for these children are uh, protector, right? Uh, so 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 you can either be a protector, you can be a striker. You can be a ruler, or you can, and and then the fourth one. What's the what's the fourth one? I don't remember. I thought it was element based because there was like a guy who like okay. he had the thing that was iron or something, or and then he. Well, iron uh, iron is like what is like one of the levels that you eventually progress. Oh, through. okay, yeah, or yeah, I got I got, I don't remember. I what can't the... believe that I'm correcting you <laughs> on a magical system. But well, there's a lot at. in the the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All okay. right. Yes, because you're given yeah. a soul type, right? And then there's tears to it, and it, this is a right. it's a very shonen uh, story mm -hmm. and setup. Uh, do you know what shonen is? Um, shonen. I mean, as far as I know, I, I mean that's a that's a magazine that that publishes manga and stuff, right? Um, well, that's that that's a sh shonen jump. Is yeah is yeah. yeah so it's a it's a it's it just means that it's it's stories centered for young boys which means right 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 yeah. their their version of like you know superhero stories is more of like oh this is an underdog character who has grit and determination and then um he's the strongest guy in the universe also don't forget that and um right. but through via the power of friendship and the fact that he is the strongest being in the world he's going to overcome threats I mm -hmm. actually don't like that genre that much, uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I do see it executed well. So this is a well executed version of the shonen, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but it, it's almost because it, they're they're big on like My Hero Academia. You must have heard of that. Yeah, yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. So that is very similar. So that's that's a world where everyone has a superpower ex except. A very small minority and the main character is in that minority and he wants to okay. be a superhero so you're like what you can't do that you're not that and he's mm -hmm. gonna do it mm -hmm. and he's gonna be better than the people that worked all their lives to do it because right. he cries a lot but uh yeah so that's i'm not really that big of a fan of them but uh yeah i i i i i put that in a sh this in a shonen category more than anything else mm-hmm mm-hmm that's all okay. to say that that's why I kind of tune out when they get into the magic, the, that power system. They went pretty in depth with uh, right. in the beginning. I kind of just, right. oh, standard shonen stuff. You either, you're either really right. strong, or you're really fast, or you get, you're more magical or magical or something. Right. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I actually have, have the page in front of me now. So, so, okay. So yeah, within, within this system. So. Yeah, when the children are being tested, there's one of four possibilities. So they can either become an enforcer, in which case they get a shield on their badge. Uh, they become a striker. That's somebody that attacks from a distance, and they get an arrow for their badge. Hmm. Uh, they get a, a scepter on their badge if they're a ruler. Those are the ones that bend the powers of heaven and earth. And then... They get a hammer on their badge if they are a forger, which is somebody who actually creates weapons uh, with their with their magic. So basically, oh. you have these you have these four different magical paths that a child can be assigned based upon. Yeah, this ceremony when they when they put their hand into something and and the water it's not really water, but this water like substance will will react to them depending upon that. So. So those are the four different paths. And then in addition to that, what we 
what, what we were talking about earlier is um, you also progress levels uh, and you um, you basically start out as a as a foundation level and then you can progress to copper uh, and then to iron and then to jade and then theoretically to gold although within the within the society that we see at the beginning here nobody has no, there, there's no gold level person that's like a legendary thing it's like the highest that people have is jade level uh like the the, the patriarchs of this society are are jade level but um everybody else is really just copper or iron so so yeah that's that's sort of the magical system uh in a in a sort of nutshell i guess that we're that we're dealing with here and so basically yeah uh as you as you mentioned with the kind of story this is so the main character way she linden uh he begins by putting his hand into this thing and nothing happens and everybody around him is sort of like oh oh he's uh one of these <laughs> and so it turns out that yeah his magical power is um really much much lower um i mean i mean he as we find out later he does still have some magical power but it's it's much lower than than, than anybody else and so uh uh, so low that he really does not have any kind of path at all. And so he is unsold. He has no, no soul to speak of that, that, that uh, powers him. And so this, and, and, and so this is basically, yeah, I mean, you mentioned some of the sort of uh, other examples of this within, you know, the sort of manga anime uh, tradition. But but for me, yeah, not coming from that uh, tradition as much, I think of this more in terms of like uh, the uh, the uh, ugly duckling. Uh, mm. I think this is a story kind of like that. Um, You're coming more also, from a baby story perspective. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming more yeah from from <laughs> very uh, very simplistic yeah fairy tales. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's mostly what I. Okay. Uh, I'm more mature also, manga and anime. right. 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 Also from also from very childish uh, Disney cartoons um, mm -hmm. as well. Um, yeah, there's this one classic Disney cartoon. Yeah, I'm not sure if you're you're familiar with it uh, called Lambert, the Sheepish Lion. No, um, I was really thinking I was going to know what you were going to say. Uh, yeah, no, I, I mean, it's a it's a, it's a it's a short from from uh, back in the day. Uh, and I, I mean, I think it's on Disney Plus now, so uh, a new generation can experience it now. But uh it's a, it's a classic um, cartoon about um, a lion who is mistakenly delivered by the stork because I mean that's that's how that's how babies mm -hmm. yeah, storks deliver them yeah uh, so a lion is mistakenly delivered to um, a uh, society of sheep and there's this one very lonely sheep mother who who adopts the lion and, and by the time the stork realizes oh no uh, oh, oh oh the lion is not supposed to be be delivered to these sheep i, I gotta send him somewhere else but but the mother's like no no this is my child now and so the stork's like okay okay that's that's fine and so and so the lion is raised by this sheep among the society of sheep and the lion um gets bullied by the sheep because he doesn't have the sheep abilities and 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 all, all the sheep like laugh at him and they're like oh you're so you're so stupid you don't you don't look anything like us and, and so he's this complete outcast and of course eventually the lion grows up and i mean the lion the, the lion is much bigger than the other sheep as a as a grown lion of course but the lion continues to get bullied by the sheep oh uh, but, no. but oh, oh no 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 yeah and 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 it's only when a, it's only when a uh when a, when a wolf attacks attacks the sheep and of course, all the sheep are, are completely helpless. And then the lion sort of um, uh, understands his inborn powers that, OK, he, he actually is able to protect the sheep against the wolf. And so so he sort of comes into his own and realizes that he has unique powers. But before that, it seemed like he was just a complete outcast and, and uh, was was worthless. Uh, so, again, that's another. Uh, Another story that I thought of as I was uh, as I was reading this. So yeah, yeah. If people want to 
check that out. Lambert, the sheepish lion. Uh, you know what? What else this reminded me of? Um, uh-huh. You can help me out here because I know it was some Greek guy, but mm-hmm. there was a guy with the idea that um, everyone's soul had metal in it that basically determined your role in society. Or it was a it was a hypothetical experiment. Right. Uh, yeah, that's actually something from uh, Plato's Republic, uh, where he's trying to figure out how to organize the correct society. And he uh, decides, well, w- well, the way that we can organize it is we can tell people the noble lie, which is that, um, OK, well, yeah, you you are made of gold. So you're you're up at the top and you're made of iron or bronze. So you're you're farther down the bottom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, de- definitely. I'm sure there was some some influence of that. Uh, I'll tell you why, because that's mixed. Because the way I found out about that in middle school, a teacher asked us mm-hmm. how we would feel if we were told that. Right, right. <laughs> and there were people who were like, okay, well, at least you know what your role in life was. And I was like, no, because first of all, I'm not going to get gold. So like, mm-hmm. I know I'm going to be assigned like one of the lower casts, and that would right. suck. And also, yeah, all right. that is is a caste system which i would argue are always bad except for um yeah uh what's the thing what else has caste systems and i was thinking tier list but that doesn't really um yeah i i I don't i don't i don't know what that is but um yeah tier list videos tier list videos oh okay you know people go like top 10 um oh i see yeah and then F tier, and then S tier is the one everyone agrees is good. Right, right. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, one, one, one more thing I'll say uh, in terms of a philosophical idea, and then we'll get back to the story, is, um, yeah, there's a, there's a famous philosophical idea by this philosopher John Rawls, the theory of justice, which is that justice means... Um, the way that you would organize a society if you didn't know what your role was in that society. So basically, if, if, if everybody sort of just like got together and said, okay, we're going to organize a society, we don't know what, what, what role we're going to have in that society, but how, how, would we, how would we organize it? So whatever would be most fair on, in that, that would, be, that would be the ideal form of justice. Mm-hmm. It's like when you cut the sandwich without right, knowing right. who's going to get which half. Mm-hmm. That's the only way to make sure someone will cut it evenly. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, good. Yeah, we've, Unsold. We, we, we've already <laughs> gone to some uh, interesting places, uh, and we're not even through the first chapter of this. But uh, Well, that's, uh, yeah, this is, yeah, people yeah. come here for philosophy and sandwiches. I hope so. I mean, I mean, either people come here for philosophy or we are uh, losing subscribers uh, because of uh, what I bring up. But uh... <laughs> hopefully people will care. I think it's interesting. good. Good. So this is um, the story about a guy. And so yeah, he yeah. finds out he's unsold, which means you don't get like any rights. You get you're like a you're in a caste system. He's not even in one of the casts. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's basically no different from uh, from children in this society. Like, um, you know, like, like, like basically this this ritual that, that he goes through, that, that's like your sort of rite of passage. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, imagine if, like, you know, uh, yeah, if you're, if you're Jewish, you have the bar mitzvah or, you know, I mean, and or you're, you're baptized or something in a, in a Christian society. Imagine that you like fail that. <laughs> and, 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 and so like you, you don't even get your, your rite of passage. And so you have to continue being on the child level, even when you're, you're much older. Yeah. You know about that, that tribe that um, they fill like this, like sack with bullet ants. And then have you heard about them? No, no. All right. So there's this tribe. And so, you know what a bullet ant is? I don't know. Okay, I can, all right. I can imagine what it is, but I've, <laughs> okay, I, yeah, it's exactly, I've never heard of it before. Yeah. So there's a <laughs> there's this thing called the Schmidt Pain Index, and there's this guy. <laughs> oh no. Uh huh. Yeah. 
there's this guy who I guess you can call him a scientist, but he let a bunch of bugs and stuff bite him, and he mm -hmm. rated the pain in yeah. a tier list. Uh -huh. And so Bullet, so you know, he no one asked him to do this, by the way. So he and then Bullet Ants, the pain is like at the top tier because it's compared to being shot at by a bullet. Mm -hmm. Um wow. So there's this one tribe, and they collect these ants. They put them in this pouch made out of leaves, mm -hmm. and then your your right of manhood is you stick your hand in there, and you have to not pull it out for a certain amount of time. Yeah. And then if you pull it out before the time's up, you have to wait a whole year before you can try it again, and you're not considered a man until you do that. So, like, you can, okay. if it's like you have to stay in there for a minute, if you pull out at 50 seconds, they're like, yeah, you have to wait a whole nother year, try again. Right, right. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Yeah, there's, uh, you hear about certain societies and you realize, like, oh, wow, if I were born in that society, yeah, I mean, there's be, 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 be no hope for me. I, I, I wouldn't even get, yeah. I'm like, no, I, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, I, I'm not into trends in my society now. And those are just like, you have to wear skinny jeans or not. So like. Right, right. <laughs> I, like, was, you, I was meant to be born in late 20th, early 21st century America. The, <laughs> the easiest, softest society there is. Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is the one for me. Yeah. Um. All right. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah. I mean, this, the, this guy, Lyndon, yeah. So he has no natural magical power. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he has no sort of um, potential to really advance uh, the way that people traditionally advance in his society. And so, I mean, understandably, he's really just trying to figure out how he can advance himself and, everybody else in his society yeah I, it, yeah i mean it's a kind of it's a weird frustrating thing uh to kind of read about where it's like he keeps trying to figure out ways to advance and the people are like well no 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 you can't do that and and he thinks okay well maybe this and it's like well yeah but i mean you've you've demonstrated no potential so i mean it's this it's this weird sort of uh double bind one might even call it a catch 22 uh to uh anticipate another oh my book we, might read later. <laughs> <laughs> we might be covering uh later on where it's like yeah okay so you know you can't advance because you have no sort of innate potential but in order to develop your potential you know that would require you to do these things that you're not able to do so it's like yeah how can you even um really have a chance to do anything and, yeah, it's the uh, yeah. like. Well, if you if you have a mentor or right. someone of another rank that you're able that is like agrees to train you, then you can do it. They won't do that uh, unless you show potential, which you can't do because no one will train you. So right, it, right. it's that. Yeah, it's um, it's if it's it's that that classic. We won't hire someone unless you have experience. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and so. Basically, we witness this character in London like getting bullied by other people in his society. Yeah, I mean, and that's um, a, a predictable sort of common thing that you see in these stories. And his uh, family is uh, a nice, a nice family, and they're they're sort of sympathetic to him. And his his sister is is much more sort of advanced and has a lot more potential. And his sister kind of helps him out. And his his uh, mom and dad uh, seem to you know, be cautiously optimistic about him eventually, but but they also kind of at times also seem to think, well, but we can't really hope too much about this this kid, but you know, but we'll see. So so yeah, I, so yeah, I mean, things seem pretty uh, pretty hopeless, but um, there's an incident where he. Um, he ends up going to see the elder uh, of the particular tribe that he's in, who is um, basically a uh, a fox spirit. Is that right? 
uh, or, or, yeah. or or is it or or is it a wolf? Uh, when I, yeah, no, it's a, it's a it's a white it, fox. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I know that because it reminded me of Naruto because they yeah. had a oh yeah a, right a, a, yeah they got yeah and they they also have animal. There's a lot of magic systems in this story. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's base ones, and then you can also bind to like a spirit, or you can do right. some even crazier stuff down the road. Uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, he's got a fox mentor spirit. Right. Yeah. So he goes to uh, goes to see this fox, and the 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 fox spirit basically says, "Well, you know, you may have to sort of forge your own path," uh, and um, and so that's basically sort of what happens is that um, Lyndon, yeah, the character, uh, basically starts going through a bunch of like magical manuals that, that he that he finds in the archives and saying like basically okay what are some sort of like tricks what are some sort of like shortcuts some things that people that people that don't have like natural magical abil- ability can still like use these to like kind of get a sort of leg up and that's a big sort of um theme that you see throughout the story is Lyndon will always um use his sort of like cleverness his his wiles to sort of like figure out how to kind of get around the rules of something and on the one hand you know some people are sort of um shocked that he does this but on the other hand it's like well yeah but that's the only way he can do it Mm. he can't he can't progress in the society by following the rules so he has to figure out some other way to do it if he wants to progress at all and not just be this you know worthless thing for all of his life and so again yeah that's that's a kind of constant tension in this book is that and and i mean and i can i can understand that you know obviously you need you need conflict in a story like this to make it interesting but there are times where i felt like it almost got it to be a little too much it's like (laughs) okay well yeah i mean you know people just continue (laughs) treating this guy like garbage when he already is garbage and it's like <laughs> okay you know <laughs> it's yeah so, i mean it sounds like you got into it if it i did oh you know, yeah 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 no and uh, yeah i guess yeah i don't necessarily yeah consider that a yeah sort of criticism a weakness i mean it's a i guess it's one of those it's a it's a feature not a bug right um where i remember there was this uh, story called um, Galaxy's Edge, not the not the Star Wars, but uh, mm-hmm. they have like a bureaucrat in it, and I like hated them so much. And I right. got like physically mad every time their character, and it, I didn't right, even right. realize. I like I had that realization with myself, like towards the end, like oh, I'm supposed to feel this way. Right, like, right, right. Sure, yeah. <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm into the. I hate this guy so much because he's being obstructive. Right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, and so another another interesting aspect of the story, and I think that this relates to, yeah, probably some of the sort of Japanese, uh, you know, anime manga influence is that yeah, the particular society that Linden is, it's very um, it's very sort of dependent upon like honor and upon like how you how you challenge people, and if you if you challenge people and um, you know, you expect certain challenges to like not necessarily be accepted. Uh, and basically a lot of that dynamic, Lyndon sort of um, kind of like manipulates that a lot of times where like, yeah, basically he gets like challenged to duels uh, and and that happens early on where um, where basically he is challenged to a duel by this, girl who is much younger than him and so it's one of these sort of like no win situations where it's like okay um there's this girl who's like who's like 10 years old whereas he's like 15 but they're like both on the same level magically speaking and so when he when when he fights in this duel basically either he's going to beat this girl who's much younger than him in which case okay well that's there's no honor in that or the girl will beat him and, and he'll be humiliated with that. And so 
uh, Lyndon is able to sort of figure out how to kind of um, manipulate that by uh, when the time comes for him to fight this girl, he decides, okay, well, actually, I would prefer to fight her father. And her father is uh, obviously a much more uh, advanced uh, magically he's, he's iron level. And, and so, um, and so the father is sort of like amused by this and, and, and the father ex accepts and, um, and what it turns out is that Lyndon has figured out that one of the, um, one of the magical abilities that he can use is this thing called the empty palm, which is this technique where basically you can completely like disable somebody's spirit. Uh, and it's considered to be a sort of like underhanded, dishonorable technique, but it's like the only technique he can <laughs> use. So, you know, so, so that's basically uh, how he sort of develops his magical strategy. And so basically uh, he challenges this much stronger opponent and the guy is, unprepared for him like like you know the guy sort of like lets down his guard is like okay i'm gonna fight this you know defenseless kid and the kid is able to sort of like uh stagger him for 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 a, a minute and and basically so, so so he does this to this other guy and before the other guy can even um return he says i can see thank you <laughs> and, 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 and so basically that's a that, that's an interesting sort of strategy is that okay the way that i'm going to sort of like rise in the society is i'm going to you know mess with much stronger people and then say okay and thank you thank you for your for your instruction and uh yeah <laughs> and, and 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 it turns out to be somewhat somewhat effective yeah yeah that's uh, this is a pretty popular protagonist I'm seeing in the uh, the community, and I, and I see what stuff like that. It's very um, fun because he's not um, he doesn't like use that technique, and then it throws the guy off, and then he's like, "Well, hand to hand," because I I've lived my whole life without magic. I'll I'll be able to take him like that. He doesn't. That's usually how they'll start, but with with him, he's like, just wanted to prove that I could, and then that was it. That was I'm done. Like, don't do not try to do not come back at me because i won't be able to handle it it's very um right right it, it's 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 very underdoggy in in a way mm -hmm. that doesn't oh, yeah. force in a, in a way where i'm like oh he is he is the underdog and the issue isn't that he doesn't believe in himself the issue is society which is the biggest right. overdog of right, them all right yeah well, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, and that that just reminded me, yeah, yeah. When he when he fights this guy, yeah, yeah, he uses the empty palm, and then after he after he like staggers the guy, he like literally just punches the guy in the in the, in the like gut with just like like a regular punch, like like just just completely unmagical at all. And so that's that's the way that the only way that he's able to like hurt the guy, even just you know very temporarily. Yeah. So it's a yeah, it's a very sort of like. You know, ultimately, very simple, bare bones kind of thing that he does, but he's able to figure out how to how to do it. You know. Yeah, and the the thing is, what he's doing hasn't been done before. Like really, right. like so, no one's really prepared for him doing any of this stuff. So, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, he didn't prove that he could win, but he proved that he could fight. Right. So the the Rocky of magic. That's right. Oh yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, so definitely, yeah, very, very, very underdog. Yeah, very much just, you know, pulling himself up by his own bootstraps. And so, so yeah, that's kind of the first um, real instance where he kind of proves himself in, in a sort of public setting. And then basically the big event that comes up after that is this, um, is this big sort of tournament and it's a tournament that only happens once every seven years, and um, yeah, yeah. So this part kind of reminded me of the of the Tri Wizard tournament in, uh, in in the Harry Potter books as well. Uh, it's a very kind of similar kind of thing where, mm. um, and so, um, so this is like when other clans from the surrounding countryside come and uh, and they all sort of show their stuff in this in this tournament setting. And so basically, yeah, Lyndon figures out, okay, well, I'm pretty much 
just going to be up against all of these other kids who are much younger than me. And so basically what I have to do is I just have to like defeat all of them really quickly and get to the point where I can be the person who is in the exhibition tournament, which is where uh, one foundation level person gets to fight against a, a much uh, more advanced person just to sort of uh, show everybody uh like uh, yeah I'm, i mean it's it's hard to even articulate what the purpose of it is other than just to show that the people on the top of the society are much better than than other people but uh you know, I, mean, uh, I mean what what's the purpose of anything the people at the top do that is right exactly yeah uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is the uh, the sports festival arc. If you were right. going to compare it to a uh, to manga, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and so like at this point, I'm like, oh, okay, so that this is going to be the story. He's going to fight people, and then they're like, okay, you can you can buy a house now, and he's going to be like, yeah, right. and then I'm going to be he's like I'm going to be the world's best homeowner, and then he's mm -hmm. going to, and then the story takes a wildly Yep. Um, out there shifts in what is happening in we're introduced to multiple characters that introduce you to like this huge world that's going on right and I, I would say that that's definitely the, uh, the spoiler point mm -hmm. for this story yeah okay yeah yeah so 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 we're getting to uh, yeah some big some big spoilers for what will what will happen in this so I guess this is the point where uh, would you would you like to read any any comments? Oh, we haven't gotten any. So. Okay, no comments. We're on the Discord. People talk mostly in there, which I'll tell them, you know, because they'll be like, "Hey, here's my thoughts on that video," and I'll be like, "Hey, you know, you could comment that, but it's fine." There's we got we have a Discord you can join, and that's most of where people are talking to us now. Um, but it's about okay, like well, life stuff, yeah. Right. Right. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. I guess, uh, I guess people were busy with, uh, with Christmas and stuff, and uh, Christmas, New uh, Year's, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's, uh, that's all over now. So you know, we, we're, we're not, we're not allowed to talk about anything Christmas related. Yeah, uh, this is just, this is January weather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we're in, we're in the bleak, the bleak January. Um, yeah, you know. Valentine's Day is coming up somewhat the, soon. The, the worst uh, holiday ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody likes that anyway. Um, yeah, so you know, the, j just just get just get prepared for you know unremitting bleakness for a while. <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I think I think the book that we're going to be covering next week will be thematically. Maybe part of that, yeah. Oh, I think that's perfect January <laughs> story time. Yeah. This is just perfect for like, oh, it's raining. I'm going to listen to the most frustrating, on purpose, uh, right. interactions mm -hmm. and satire. Um, right, right. Okay. So, well, yeah. So, so yeah, no, no, no comments for this week, but, you know, please, please send in your comments, you know, please, please let us know what you think. We, we, we are very appreciative of those and, yeah, I mean, while while Cody is much more sort of um, involved in the technical aspects of that, I also uh, very much enjoy hearing from people and yeah, and hearing their their opinions on the stuff that we we talk about. So definitely, definitely be sure to um, write those in. Um, so spoiler territory. All right. Yeah, spoiler because he's getting ready for another standard fight. And he's like, I've learned potions and all this stuff, and you can temporarily right. enhance your auras. And I've learned the defense against the dark arts. Uh... Yeah, it's it's everything. He's like, I got a broom. I I, I caught the go. I did. I'm I'm all set. And then this I... guy, this I like this threw me off so much. This guy yeah. comes in and just right. starts killing everyone. And right. one of the first people is the main character's mom who this character beheads right, right and then like all these like trained fighters come in to like fight this guy off and he kills all of them right yeah um yeah so yeah the uh 
the uh, tournament that, that that happens, yeah, I mean, I mean, Lyndon basically is able to easily defeat all of these kids and get to the exhibition match, but it turns out that, yeah, one of the other clans to this tournament has gone off and summoned this um, this like. I guess supreme patriarch, uh, who 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 has been dead, but but basically his his uh, spirit lives on, and um, and this is a big deal, yeah, because this supreme patriarch is actually is actually gold level, which is again is is one of those things that like you know people talk about how oh yeah in the in the in the in the past yeah there were there were like some gold level you know magicians and stuff, but yeah, we don't really have anybody in our society now that that has attained that level, and so this is like the sort of mythical, legendary being that that these people have summoned. Yeah, and so, uh, and yeah, yeah, and and this was the part. Yeah, again, with my limited background in anime and manga, but I could still tell. Oh yeah, this this is like this is like really, really anime right now. I mean, yeah. it's where, where 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 this like huge guy with like big wings comes <laughs> down. And starts killing people, and he's like way more powerful than everybody else. And it's like, yeah, I mean, this is almost like sort of, um, sort of like uh, caricature of uh, of manga that you. That you I mean, of. yeah, I mean, especially when he when his <laughs> when his like he's seen like his mom die. Like that's absolutely in that yeah, anime yeah. where like you get a close up of their eyes, right, while like right. everything slowed down. They go like <gasps> they do that looking around crazy eye thing and then like a splatter of blood is on their face and then everything's mm-hmm. in black and white and then the guy's like ha i think yeah he's right, laughing right. the whole time too like he's having fun so the guy mm-hmm. yeah the guy is just classic he has muscles that are like if you've seen right. jojo yeah it's just this massive dude yeah he's got these big veiny wings yeah <laughs> they, they 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 describe it yeah yeah it's described very uh um vividly yeah and um so so yeah, so basically that that all happens where yeah, this guy's killing everybody, and and there was this like, you know, I I I thought this was a this was a cool kind of like narrative trick where where there's this point where Lyndon is like, well yeah, but uh, he he yeah he's 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 like thinking about it, he's like, but yeah, aren't aren't gold beings like composed of of like pure magic, and if I can like you know, get in my empty palm in a certain way, then maybe I could even disable this guy and stuff. And so, yeah, yeah. And the way that it's told, like in a lot of other stories, this th- this would actually lead up to, you know, uh, the underdog actually figuring out a way to even um, defeat somebody like this. However, <laughs> in this story, he just does it and it's nothing. And he's he's killed yeah so <laughs> yeah so yeah the, the protagonist is murdered um at the halfway point after right. yeah he's like dodging things and he's like i'm gonna do it i just need to get mm-hmm. everyone else is fighting around him yeah and then just 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 ca- very casually killed um right, right. and that's when the second twist of this story comes in which mm-hmm. Um, now I was doing this on audio, so it, mm-hmm. the 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 audio made it sound very like robotic and AI like. Mm. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, to the point where I thought it was someone like a from like Earth or something or like tech who like came down to this like world and was observing it um, mm-hmm. because they have like this like fairy assistant that basically functions as their AI that's able right. to like communicate to their council. And I was like, is this just someone from the future? What is happening right now? Because mm-hmm. there's someone going like a, a, a error anomaly detected uh, presence felt here. And then it is, uh, it is someone from a very high up council with time manipulation powers. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, if, if I were to sort of critique certain things about this, I would say this aspect of the story maybe could have been set up a little bit better than it was here. But at the same time, I think there's maybe even a defense against the way that it is set up where it's like, it's, it's supposed to be really kind of abrupt where it's like, 
okay, there's this one story and then all of a sudden this other thing happens. And so maybe, maybe that's, that's why it happens. But yeah, so, so basically, yeah, throughout, throughout this book, I mean, even at the very beginning, you get, um, you get certain things like, I want a report on uh, certain, certain things in this society. And then, and then it, it, it basically goes into the story. And so you get very sort of um, minimal references to the fact that there's this other thing sort of watching the story and sort of getting information about this society. But you don't really get many details about that. Yeah. Until this point when, yeah, it turns out that there's been this, yeah, this like God-like being, yeah, watching everything happening on this planet. And then she finally comes down to this planet and basically, yeah, pauses time, basically pauses as this, as this winged being is like killing everybody and goes up to, uh, goes up to Lyndon and, and like, uh, starts telling, telling him about how, you know, the way the world really works and how the society that he has been living in is just this one tiny little part of this much broader world and basically Lyndon is sort of uh, taken on this journey where, where he sees all of these different uh, beings and stuff throughout history who have attained this level of magical know-how that's like completely you know boggles his mind it's just completely uh he yeah yeah he can't even imagine how much magical power these these other people have have uh, gotten because nobody in his society even has that and so this this godlike being basically shows him all of these possibilities and basically says okay so when this when when, when these people like uh summon this uh, winged gold level guy who's killing everybody that that's like a sort of um, anomaly that wasn't supposed to happen <laughs> and if that didn't happen you Lyndon would have just like lived a regular life and you you would have eventually gotten to copper and, and iron levels you, you just you just would have taken a little bit longer than other people and really yeah you just live in this like weird sort of like rural society where they look at this thing that you have as like this uh, horrible deficiency, whereas it's it's just like a sort of minor handicap that, that can be uh, um, fixed in all these ways. And so basically Lyndon has shown all this stuff. And so and so basically um, he was supposed to live his life in one way. This thing with the with the big winged guy coming down, it kind of ruined that, obviously. Uh, and. He now has the choice to, yeah, I, I, I think it's, I think it's put to him that, that he has the choice to continue to live his life that, that other normal way, or he can go out beyond his society and he can fulfill more potential than he, than he ever thought that he could. And I think that the catch is, is that he won't live quite as long if he, if he, if he does that. And this is, yeah, yet another, uh, you know, reference to ancient Greek type stuff. I mean, this is um, the story of Achilles, um, mm. who was basically, uh, he, he, Achilles was presented with the option, okay, you can either live a long life, but you don't do anything special, or you can achieve great glory, but have a short life. And Achilles chooses great glory in a short life. Um, and so I feel like this, this thing that, that happens with Lyndon, Lyndon is uh, a little bit like that, um, where he decides, yeah, to sort of take a much more difficult path, uh, but that will achieve a lot more glory. I like that, that scene of like him being told what is like, because yeah, it's like, this was like a time anomaly. These happen. I undo them every now and then, and I make everyone forget. So like that is what you were going to do you would have gotten reasonably high up on what you were trying to do you would have had a family and you would have died you know reasonably old you know it would have ended um it seems like I, yeah you would have been killed in like this like major event that happens but 
by then you've lived most of your life anyway. Um, right, right. And that's much longer than most people get to say. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's like, that's what you wanted originally. I mean, what else did you want? Did you want like to, to, to become like the very best, like no one ever was, or did you just want to hang out? Um, I'm more of a hangout guy. I probably would have been like, yeah, I'll, I'll uh... yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, I don't have any use for for glory in a short life myself. No. Uh, do Do we have glory anymore? Do, do people experience glory or? Well, Elon Musk. Oh, is he? Is that glory? Bad, it's a bad, it's a bad <laughs> example. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> So there's Elon Musk, there's Jeff Mark Bezos, Zuckerberg. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. No, I yeah. guess sports. Oh yeah, sports. Yeah, yeah. That's the, that's probably the the close for analogy, which is why and and there's a reason why uh, neither of us brought that up uh, initially <laughs> because uh, yeah, it's not not our uh, thing. Yeah, it's yeah. not it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> If you haven't already guessed from the from the interests that we've espoused <laughs> doing this podcast, yeah, we're not into sports. Um, yeah, no, this it rarely comes up, but I can barely catch things. Uh, it's it's mm -hmm. you know, when someone like throws you keys or something, I have like a very uh, I have a very visible moment of panic where I'm like, please just let me catch this right this right, right. one time, and it'll be fine when I drop other stuff. And God forbid they ask me to throw them something. <laughs> because no one believes you when you say oh i don't know how to throw uh and then they're going believe to believe you. you you believe me well, that's believe very you. that's very generous of you uh, <laughs> um i'm truly the linden of um physical activities well i mean you know if we if we think of linden as like the kid that kid gets picked last uh in when when people are playing sports uh yeah i i i'm definitely lending as well yeah. <laughs> we can all can all identify with them in that respect did you have that thing where you basically you have a community of the last picks that you all just hang because you've all realized like we're no one's we're just going to be hanging out for the next 10 minutes while these people pick teams right um so you know what's going on with you and then you just you just form this <laughs> Right. Well, yeah, I'm I'm friends with the guy who's going to be picked last on the other team, so mm -hmm. it's actually more time for us to hang out, and it's a good right. thing that we're going to be sitting here for a while. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah. Just yeah. like Lyndon. <laughs> Just like my boy Lyndon. Uh. Yeah, our boy Lyndon. Yeah. <laughs> um. Okay. So so basically, yeah, that leads into um. Yeah, the second part of the story, which is, so Lyndon chooses, you know, this particular uh, harder path that he's he's presented, but he knows that, yeah, in order to do that, he's going to have to leave his family, leave his entire society in order to do that. And so basically time is restored. Uh, everything that happened before the winged guy came down and killed everybody that's that, that's just like reversed and so that 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 just never happened although i think linden can still remember it happening is that is yeah that, is that right? so because yeah. mm -hmm. she's like normally i make everyone forget but i like right. how you like gotta hit him mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. like just for fun i'm gonna let you remember that this happened and remember what your destiny was right right mm -hmm. and so that's the only thing that from this timeline that's the only thing that's going to diverge here is right. that you remember that any of this happened mm -hmm. right right so so Lyndon basically gets to do his big exhibition match at this at this tournament and so he plays against this uh yeah, yeah he fights against this much higher level opponent he's able to defeat the opponent using dirty tricks he'd like he like buries some like uh mosquito bugs uh in in the ground and and then like summons them at a certain point and it like distracts the guy and 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 so he's able to like beat him that way and uh and again every 
audience like, oh, that was a dirty trick, but we're still impressed. Uh, <laughs> and and that Lyndon, is that's all the yeah. audience is doing throughout the entire book is that's like, right. Yeah, yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. I mean that's that that's continually <laughs> the reaction that people have to live in. It's like, oh, that's that's so horrible and dishonorable. But I can understand why you did it because you have no other skills. So okay. I yeah. like your I like your uh, like your moxie kid. Yeah. yeah. It's a it's a whole society of I'll allow it. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean that, I, I mean there's basically two different two different kinds of characters that Lyndon encounters throughout this. There are the people that like his moxie that that will allow it. <laughs> and then there are the people that that hate him and and you know just just want to keep him down, right? Um so um so yeah he managed to to impress manages to impress somebody who's um a member of like one of the one of the schools uh one of the magic schools which is again one of these things and this in this particular society it's like even to be able to go to a magic school that's like something that like barely anybody gets to do and so it's like a huge honor to be able to go uh to the school and so and so Lyndon is able to do that and that basically is the next part of this book and at this point yeah this started to really kind of remind me uh of the overall dynamic that also went on in the uh the uh, name of the 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 yeah the uh, name of the wind uh yes. that book that we that we covered a couple of months ago uh i think is yeah it's very, very similar uh yeah to the yeah yeah the character in that book going to the uh the college that, that he goes to and the way that he gets bullied and stuff yeah which in the um the hero's journey fantasy uh mm -hmm. stories well very, i i enjoyed this more than i like name of the wind i don't something about name of the wind really just rose me the wrong way mm -hmm. um but also um like in that hero's journey part this is like the threshold guard this is like the quarter mark in it yeah where like he's shown it you know the that time traveler agent i don't know what the um right she's that guardian that introduces him to that world and offers him something outside of the world he knows so it's like origin wise it's it's uh it's like a little it's just a little bit longer in the mm -hmm. first part of the hero's journey right right yeah yeah i um yeah i think i like uh the name of the wind a little bit more than this but it is i, I mean that that is a much longer book uh but uh and and it requires probably a lot more investment uh of time and 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 effort but but yeah uh i think i think here uh things are th things are set up but yeah there's not there's not quite as much detail uh in certain aspects of things but um so so basically um he's in the he, he, he's in this school but he doesn't plan on being there for that long because his ultimate goal is to find this particular woman that he that he saw in one of the visions that the, that the guy like being showed him this this woman who is um, who is the disciple of the sword sage um, and you know I. I I really like the way you you say these fantasy terms like a professor who's like just a little unfamiliar with the top like the way yeah. you, the way you're like uh with who's the uh the apprentice of the 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 sword sage I believe it was and uh yeah. it's it's very fun for me. <laughs> I mean again I'm probably tipping my hand a little bit. This is this is the point where yeah, I mean yeah, as you mentioned there are a lot of different sort of magical systems that like are within this book and at a certain point yeah you know this is at a certain point this is just kind of not my thing um you know the, at a certain point this it, it becomes more just sort of like it's describing a D, D campaign or something where it's like okay this person has a certain amount of hit points versus this person and then they use this ability and then they use this ability it's like okay 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 i you know <laughs> i get it uh you know i can still follow the general thread of the story but it just 
yeah, it starts to lose me a little bit. Um, I'll tell you what you'll hate is literary RPGs. Those are, um, yeah. <laughs> it's, I don't know. I don't know if you've checked one out before, but um, especially an audiobook where mm-hmm. I you can't skip it, but. You know, they'll they'll do it in a cool way where they're like, oh, you can freeze time and you'll get the stats of this like monster you're staring at. Right. Um, and so it's like, if you're interested, you can read like this monster's D&D sheet, basically. But if you're doing an audiobook, you can't even skip that section. So mm-hmm. it, it'll be like, there's multiple ones where they fall on like open loot boxes and they mm-hmm. get like items. And then you just have to sit there for like 20 minutes in the audiobook where they go like, you got plus one boots. And I'm like... I don't need to know this. I I don't need to know this part. Um, that right. that's where I get to my limit. Where they'll be like, "You just got mm-hmm. like a, a plus." Literally, you got a plus two sword. I'm like, "Is that does that is that going to change anything? What am I?" And right. then, right. Brightblade. The guy has twenty spells he has access to, and there's no theme to it. Just, he just randomly gets like a mm-hmm. bunch of spells, and you have to sit there and they're like, "You have lightning bolt. Lightning bolt will do this much damage," and it. Uh, it's pretty rough. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, these this just speaks to my own particular, you know, prejudices and uh, preferences with uh, with stories. You know, I, I, I prefer stories that take place in our world rather mm. than in some, you know, mythical world. Uh, but, you know, uh, I can... I can get into uh these kinds of things to a certain extent but um and 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 i will say that the way that this sort of story is done is very 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 well i mean i mean overall it's 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 a uh, very well uh well uh, written and if this is the kind of thing that you're into i think i, I think you will enjoy it um but yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if I will continue reading this series beyond beyond this book um, myself. But yeah, again, that's the, those are just my preferences. But uh, that's yeah. that's where I am too. I was I was like I w- I'm done. I'm not angry. I was actually satisfied with like the story, but I I'm not I'm not following uh, right. where it's gonna go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically, yeah. To just sort of fast forward. At a certain point, yeah. I mean, he gets to the school, he gets bullied, he actually finds uh, this this woman that he's looking for, and they they team up, and uh, and the, this book basically ends with with him and him and the woman, you know, going off into the into the wilderness, and it's like, but that's but that's you know another story, and so. Uh, and 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 uh, you know, and if you're reading it on 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 Kindle, you know, as you finish it, it says, "Buy the second, but by 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 volume two in the in the Cradle series." And so and so, it's basically like you know, this is ultimately just one long episode of this of this much longer thing. And you know, and, and I'm sure you know if you're if you're properly invested in it, it's uh, the the. The other episodes are probably uh, interesting, but um, yeah, to me, uh, the first part of this was was really intriguing. Where yeah, he was this total underdog within this particular society, and uh, and once it sort of took a turn to something else, um, it was it was still interesting, but not, but not quite as interesting as it, as it had been. And again, and that's, that, that's a big risk that you take in these kinds of stories where you sort of set up this one thing and all of these characters and then say, but then he's going to leave all of that and do this completely different thing. And so that's, uh, that's basically the sort of dynamic of what goes on here. Yeah. That, that was that feeling too, where it's like, Oh, like, so he's not a chosen one type thing. Uh, he's the opposite of a chosen one, which I, I see pretty often. And often when I see things that say he's not the chosen one, it turns out that they are. And then in this one, exactly, yeah, yeah. it was like, well, he's not, but he did get chosen by like a, a He's God. the unchosen one, which in a way, isn't that kind of like being the chosen one? <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's this one, there's this one story uh, called manga, called mm-hmm. anime too. It's called Black Clover. I do not like it. It is a world where everyone has magical abilities, mm-hmm. except for the main character. 
He has no mm -hmm. magical abilities. This might sound familiar. Um, so what he does is like he just works out all the time. And your introduction to him is doing one-handed upside down push-ups. Uh, mm -hmm. and he's like counting to a thousand. And he's like super ripped. And I'm like, that's not physically, you're still, you are magic. That like that's not what a human can do. And then also he finds out, spoilers for Black Clover, he has magic. It's just a different kind. And also it's super strong. Um, and it makes him stronger. Uh, and he has like a sort of anti-magic that he was chosen by the anti-magic force. So it's like, so he was chosen. He was literally chosen. And they're like, yeah. But not like, not like at the beginning. Mm -hmm. on the at the end of the first episode he's chosen i'm like okay that's okay great. yeah so in the beginning he's chosen that's great right. um right. after that he like hits people with a sword a lot i didn't like it i heard it's supposed to be it's also i don't know if maybe you've heard this where people go like you should check it it gets way better at episode 42 right and, <laughs> and i i mean i mean i mean episode 42 is so good <laughs> <laughs> that it totally makes up for the 41 crampy episodes that you watched before. I, I mean, yeah. you don't even understand. You don't even understand. Yeah. You know, it's what I skipped to episode 42 because <laughs> I was like, okay, if it gets better, then I'll just start at that note. And it was just. No, like, no, man. You can't <laughs> do it that way. No, no. You have to experience the 41 episodes in order to. <laughs> <laughs> that's the yeah that 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 whole world that some people live in <laughs> but i agree those 40 episodes were terrible and i'm like why were you watching this why did no, you i mean and and i'm 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 totally guilty of that i mean i cannot tell you the i, I mean the number of crappy marvel comics that i have read <laughs> in order to get to the good ones is uh, it's, it's it, it may very well be the majority of, of Marvel comics I've read have, have been have been the not good ones just to get to the good ones. Yeah. Yeah. yeah which does make you appreciate them a little more. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like that with some books, but like I like the first ones. I'm just like the right. stuff that I love about the series doesn't come up until many books down the road. I still liked it, though. Sure. But um, yeah, right. I mean, yeah, I'm like, but yeah, that's you're. I'm not expecting anyone to read like three books so they could get to the part that I'm actually talking about. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But okay. So, you know, overall, uh, I think that this book is, uh, good. Uh, I think that I, you, you know, again, if it's, if it's the kind of thing that you're interested in, uh, I think that you will really enjoy it. And even if you're not so into it, like me, uh, you know, I, I definitely enjoyed a lot of, stuff about this and i did invested in the in the character in the story overall uh not quite enough to continue on with the series uh but um and i think that there are a lot of things that you will encounter in this book where you see okay well that's that's very kind of derivative of of other things but again that's that's just the sort of genre that we're in. I mean, you know, that's that's an inevitable thing that we'll have in this genre is that there's a lot of similar tropes and things that come up. But uh, I think that the way that the way that Will White sort of um, uses the the psychology of things and the sort of way that he sets up this particular society and stuff is uh, very, very very effectively done and. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to say uh so I realized this is when it said Will White mm -hmm. I thought it was by Will Wheaton. <laughs> and that yep. was a factor Wesley in Wesley Crusher. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a factor in me picking the book because I was like, "Oh, Will Wheaton. I've heard that. Oh, that's cool that he wrote a book. That'll be interesting." Mm -hmm. Um I've since found out that those are not only different people, they're different names entirely. Um, they are. Yeah. We, we, I, we have the, 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 uh, will, um, is, is, is it, is it even, is it even one, one, one L? Probably not. No. Like, uh, Will Wheaton. I didn't know his name was one L either. No, no, it's not. <laughs> Okay. okay yeah 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 so they are completely different ones yeah so that yeah i uh not one word <laughs> but, but i i i enjoyed it i just didn't um really like and i was like 
intrigued by that big time travel thing that was happening but for some reason i was just like okay i'm done with this like maybe if i didn't have other stuff i wanted to get to right i, I would go into the series but i just sure. yeah yeah mm-hmm. i'm not particularly into um fighting tournaments uh yeah 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 i mean that is that is one of the dynamics here it's just yeah i mean there's just there's just so many other things to get to that when you see when, when, when you get into something like unsold where it's like well yeah it's book one of like an 11 book series and it's like okay well yeah. unless it's unless it's the best thing i've ever read in my life uh i don't know if i'm gonna <laughs> yeah look every now and then i'll find a story and i'm like how many are in the series four all right, yeah. you know what? Let me yeah. just let me just go through them all. I'm gonna burn yeah. through these. Um, right, right. But more often than not, I go like, "Oh, well, that's just never gonna happen." I don't see how I have the. And it's not that I don't have the time, but I, I just like I, I would rather re-listen to another story, or I'd rather go check it. If this was a show, if they made a, if they made, oh, if yeah. they made this into an anime, I'd think that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I'd watch it casually. I don't know if I'd be super invested either. I don't I don't right. know. I I, I oh, enjoy yeah, it, but yeah. I'm not like you know, like if, if they made a movie and like it was like they made a bunch of different changes, I I wouldn't be um the what I what I do now, which is I lean against the person who's watching it with me and I go like in the in the book, uh he says um he says like one word differently and it actually makes a huge difference. So I don't I don't like how they did I am I am that guy. Um I would oh, yeah. not be no, that I'm guy not. for this. I would be like, oh, they uh, they changed stuff. Right, right. Yeah, I'm I'm definitely that guy as well. I mean, you know, last episode, yeah. I mean, I mean, with Kindred, yeah, you know, there were all kinds of weird changes they made to the to the TV series. Yeah, yeah. But, you gotta be uh, like, yeah. All right, just so you know, that's that's not what actually like Bullet Train. That was that was a big thing, oh, and bullet, that was like oh, Bullet Train guy, yeah. Just uh yeah, so the first half is vaguely like the book, and then after that is a different story. So right. that was by the way, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody in the book is uh Japanese, whereas yeah. uh, <laughs> and this uh yeah, only one character is yeah. <laughs> even though it still takes place in Japan. Yeah. Uh, yeah uh one of the characters who's supposed to be a main character who's a background character now, he was uh yeah. They kept him, which is cool. Uh yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, they're like British and stuff. I don't, I don't know why they did that, but uh, yeah, Bad Bunny I, is in there for some reason. Yeah, which uh, some people were were uh, you know that that's that thing every now and then where I find out that there's a new celebrity, and so that was right, that. Right. That's how I. Found it. Yeah, the the only way I'm able to keep up with that kind of stuff is by watching Saturday Night Live and mm. the the uh, musical guests, you know. So. That's how I'm able to keep up with the music that the kids are are listening to these days. Yeah, I get my Instagram feed, which is, and I'll go through it, and then there'll be stuff like, "Oh my God, this is like a goddess," and I'm like, "Who is that?" And they're like, "Oh, it's the new pop singer." Okay, I kind of like it. I was like, "Oh my God, it's it's Dua Lipa." And I'm like, "Okay, Dua Lipa, new pop yeah. star. Gotcha." Mm-hmm. Everyone's yeah. talking about, "Oh, yeah. Bad Bunny has fangirls." Okay, so he's popular with teenagers. Okay, gotcha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um. But yeah, that's all my thoughts on unsold. Let me ask you, if you're sold. Yeah. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> are you are you are you asking me or our or our listeners? Okay. Uh both. You know what? Comment below if you're sold. Uh or what yeah. your soul is. Yeah, I mean I, I I enjoyed the book, but yeah, I mean I'm not going to read any other uh books in the series i'm not going to read any ones that i have to actually pay for so in that sense i guess i'm not i'm not sold, sold on yeah on, on yeah sold. i'm kind of not either okay i didn't i didn't hate it i don't think it's bad i just no 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 it's, it's just, good yeah yeah i just this isn't really a, a me type of story right yeah me neither so you can't get so I don't know maybe maybe people hopefully you know what get mad I don't that'll be good for engagement we should we need to start uh, doing that more we need to start having more right, aggressive right. hot takes um mm-hmm. I don't like One yeah. Piece 
So squeeze that in there. Maybe that'll mm. get some controversy going. Yeah. Have you heard of that? Yeah. I, uh, I watched like, I watched like the first three episodes of it. Uh, yeah. But I'm not going to watch the remaining 1200. I don't think. Um, yeah. yeah. There's very so. distinctly a part in that story where a guy's superpower was shooting snot that would explode. And I went like, whatever this is. Yeah, I'm not into that. No. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever this is going for is just not my thing. Um, All right. Well, I think okay. it's time that we hit the road for the magic tournament that we're going to after this. Yeah, yeah. Now I got some. I got some dirty tricks that I want to that I want to use to uh, really uh, really mess with people. Some pocket uh, sand. Yeah, yeah. But um, so next week, catch twenty two, a military satire. Yeah, this will be a very different kind of book. <laughs> a book that. Uh, the brief discussion we've had, we have found that we both expected it to be something else. <laughs> oh yeah, but uh, uh, yeah. So, so that should be an interesting discussion. We might talk a little bit about uh, some adaptations uh, of it that have been made as well. But uh, but yeah, primarily we'll be talking about the book. So, yeah. and then Nightlands after that. Which oh is yeah, back to... uh, I think it's I think it's the the Nightland, right? Yeah. By by Hodgson. Yeah. 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 And there's two versions of it. There's the original and then there's a rewrite that someone did to yeah, modernize. The, it. Uh, the uh, original I was able to find on Kindle. Oh. I'm not sure if I'm not sure if the rewrite is, is on there, but uh yeah. So Okay, so you're going through the original on that? That's the plan. Yeah, we'll see. We'll okay, see, I'm able to get through. It. Yeah. Oh yeah. If you just uh, for trivia, um, the original was considered archaic at the time it was written by contemporary authors, including H.P. Mm -hmm. Lovecraft, who said it's one of the best cosmic horror stories, but mm -hmm. almost unreadable for audiences. Right, right. I mean, so unreadable that as soon as you read it, you go crazy. Yeah, I which think that's what H.P. Lovecraft said. You know. And so yeah, we can get into the. We're going to go crazy and lose our sanity meters. That's right. Um, all right, Duncan, what's our outro today? Okay. So, um, Empty Palm, you are completely uh, immobilized and uh, turn and tune in for the next episode. Oh, yeah. Don't, yeah, don't go anywhere. That's right. Don't go anywhere. Super. <laughs>